everyone, and welcome to another episode of Small Town Big Business, a podcast about doing big business in rural America. I'm your co-host for today, Deb Barnett. I'm also the executive director for Southern Illinois Now, where we focus on advancing the 17 southernmost counties of Illinois as a great place to live, work, and of course, to do business. I'm Jennifer Olson, Director of Business Development for the City of Marion. We are recording today in the City of Marion at Ethos at the Citadel. Ethos is a co-working incubator and training space helping businesses get started and thrive. Speaking of thriving, we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for our sponsors. So I'd like to thank Arcadia Wealth Group. I'd like to thank Black Diamond, Harley Davidson and RV, Fowler Heating and Cooling, Swinford Media Group, Watermark Auto Group Foundation and our producer Union Street Arts. And you can join the Small Town Big Business podcast on your favorite podcast platform. You can also find us on our YouTube channel. Just search Small Town Big Business. And when you're there, don't forget to subscribe so that you are notified of our new releases the minute they come out. If you're new to the podcast, we interview successful business owners and founders about their business success, their business story, and we know that you will be inspired by today's story and lessons learned or whatever we, we comes out today. I'm so excited and just happy to welcome from Ridgeway, Illinois, CEO of Dinger Bats, Kyle Drone. So welcome, Kyle. Thank you very much. I'm uh, yeah, excited to be here. Yeah, we're so excited and we're so proud of Dinger Bats and that it's located right here in Southern Illinois. So for our listeners, if you could just start by sharing a little bit about you and how Dinger Bats got its start, I think it's a really, not only an inspiring story, but is um, similar to how most businesses get started as you really just saw a need. Yeah, so, uh, you know, my passion growing up was playing baseball. Um, Got that from my dad. Played all the way through college, played at Shawnee uh, Junior College there in Olin. Um, from there, went down to Jackson, Tennessee, played at Lambeth University. Um, while there, I was a catcher, by the way. The uh, There was a double-A team there uh, that was affiliated with the Cubs at the time, um, although I'm a Cardinal fan. Um, <laughs> Go Cards. Was, uh, yeah, you have to get uh, that uh, in. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but anyway, they needed a bullpen catcher for the summer. I was still trying to play professional ball at the time, you know, from college to that, that was the dream. And so I took that job, um, you know, for a couple years, uh, knew some of the guys, they were, uh, you know, basically comes down to, they were complaining about, uh, the wooden bats that they were getting saying they couldn't get quality wood. I asked them if they would try them, if we made them, took it back to dad. And the next thing you know, we're in the bat business. So, uh, I have been out to Ridgeway in the very early days. Um, I think you were still running around playing ball back at the time, but, uh, your dad gave me a tour. And back then I think that you had maybe one, two lathes running and, um, the, the adjoining property was like an old rental house and you all were, uh, dipping and hanging bats oh. in coat closets so and everything. You were way back. So yeah. I, I okay. am, uh, this is ancient history. So like 2003 so or four probably, or something like that. Yeah. Probably. So, so fast forward, what what does two decades uh, mm-hmm. change? Uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. So I didn't realize that you'd been at that point. So yeah, we did it in the house I grew up in. We would cut them in the factory we're in now transport them down to the garage of the house (laughs) where we would paint them and then from there we would take them in engrave them uh, color fill them package box them on pallets out in the street waiting for the uh, the trucks to come so uh, yeah back then I think um, at that time we had just gotten a big contract with worth sporting goods to be a private label so in a 10 month span we went from making around 300 bats to the next 10 months making 25,000 bats to then them being sold out to Rawlings and Rawlings did not acknowledge us as having that contract. So Mm -hmm. our roller coaster was straight up, straight down, and then just stayed on the, on the low side for a long time until we could build back up our brand that never really got started. Cause in the first 10 months it was dinger. Then we got this big contract and Dinger kind of got pushed to the side. 
and then all of a sudden you know we lose that now we're we're pushing dingers so but you know now we're back up to 30,000 bats a year and uh, you know we're was looking to be at this point around 50,000 and then the pandemic hit and uh, you know we're just kind of rebounding back from that so so let's go back. I think it's interesting, as Jennifer mentioned, she saw it from the very beginning days yeah. and you described how all that worked. So <clears throat> people see what Dinger Bats is now, but as Jennifer mentioned, two decades ago, you were working, you know, these processes just very simply and starting small. And I think that's a great testimony to businesses that are looking to get started and maybe don't have, you know, a huge building or the funds to start. I mean, starting small, it sounds like it was really important to build the, the business up to where it is today. Yeah, to be honest, that was really the only uh, option we had um, starting out. The contract was never something we were seeking. It just kind of mm -hmm. came to us and we were able to win the contract based on, you know, the, the trust and, and the, uh, you know, craftsmanship of what we were doing at the time. But uh, yeah, I mean, Starting small is the only way to go. I mean, you got to crawl before you walk, I guess. So the contract, when you mentioned that contract, I immediately envisioned you or your dad going out and like beating the pavement, knocking on doors and, and hunting down these contracts. But you said it kind of fell in place. Talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So, um, you know, we were just building our brands, just starting out. Like I said, 10 months in, I was actually working. He owns a countertop uh, business. Uh, solid encounters and I was working for him my eight hours during the day or 10 or 12 whatever it was and then I would cut bats at night in the back mm -hmm. of the shop and um, you know we weren't really out there pushing to look for this contact or contract it was a private label which means you know OEM basically we make the product put their label on it mm -hmm. it appears that it comes from them so Worth Sporting Goods um, out of Tullahoma Tennessee had started calling all the back companies and asking for samples. Well, we were the only ones, uh, and I give the credit to my father on this one, was, you know, I asked him, I said, hey, they want samples, let's send them down there. And he said, no, call them back and see if we can hand deliver and get a meeting. So we smart. were the only company that Very did that. Very smart. Yeah, and uh, from that, we were the only ones that they got to meet face to face. Mm -hmm. It ended up being a series of meetings and, uh, and kind of sold the deal without the equipment to produce the deal, you know, ahead of time. So we got the PO, then went to the bank, scrambled to get all the equipment, get all that mm -hmm. done. We had a four month turnaround. So from not having the wood, the equipment or anything, the training to do mm -hmm. it, you know, we were all self-taught. Like once all the equipment came in and YouTube was not as <laughs> <laughs> prevalent as it, thing, as it yeah. is today, but um, so we, we turned it around and our first order was, I believe it was 22,000 bats hmm. and, uh, we made our delivery time, um, which I'm not exactly sure when you were there, but if you were there part of that, that's when you would have seen a lot of people. And that was really community help. You know, that was not, we only had me and another guy that were paid employees and then dad, uh, was helping when he could. Um, but we were, uh, you know, pizza and, uh, beverages. Uh -huh. And everybody come help, uh, you know, paint and bag and box bats. So. It's like a moving party, but it's a yeah. bat but, making but party. But it's the company that Ridgeway built. Exactly. And, you know, you said uh, YouTube wasn't even really around to learn things, but I'd be surprised to learn when Ridgeway got good internet, if it has good internet. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, I mean, I don't remember. I feel like we, <laughs> I mean, we do have good internet. We've had good internet for a long time. You know, Shawnee Communications is right there. So we, that helps. You know, it's an equality, right? You know, the next town over. Um, but, um, you know, I, I don't really, really think that was ever a problem because, you know, the all the laser engraving stuff was, I would create the art and we could do it on disk drives and stuff like that. And then um, th this contract really consumed our next 10 months. So I don't, I don't remember when. Dial, I do remember the dial up. Uh, <laughs> the AOL back in the day when I was in high school, but I don't remember when we got actual fast internet. Yeah. So I love in your story. I mean, I do think sometimes people think they can't get started if they don't have a big factory or a lot of equipment. So I love that piece, but also um, the up and down, you know, that, that business is not a upward trajectory. So tell me about recovering from the loss of um, that contract. Oh, I mean, it was tough. Um, 
I mean, I was 25 at the time, so I kind of, you know, went through the emotional battles of being 25. Hey, I'll just go work for somebody else. This went away. And uh, really, it was dad that just said, hey, this is the goal. We got to sell two bats a day to get to here. Then we bump it to three. Then we bump it to four. Next thing you know, we're selling 100 bats a week, you know, and, and he really gave me that confidence slash we're not giving up. You know, he, uh, he doesn't have quit in the vocabulary. So he really uh, pretty much is why we're still around, you know, in many ways, not just that. But So, Kyle, we've mentioned Ridgeway many times. Population, what would you say, less than 1,000 people? Oh, yeah. Well, the sign says 800. 800? And so the next okay. census, I expect that to go down a little bit, probably. Okay. But it was 1,100 when I was in, in school. So. Okay. So for listeners that maybe aren't familiar with Southern Illinois, Ridgeway, community of 800 people. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure that you had or could have moved that Dinger Bats, the company, anywhere in the country um, or had that opportunity. Why Southern Illinois? Why stay in your hometown of Ridgeway? Well, uh, first and foremost, it's home. And, uh, you know, we uh, started it because that was kind of like the deal. You're starting the company. You come work for me. And, uh, you know, we'll see where it goes. I, I, I think early on, which is funny, is he did it to just get me to come back and work for him, thinking mm-hmm. that really wasn't going to go anywhere. And then, you know, when it did go somewhere, you know, he's you know, obviously been the biggest supporter and uh, kept pushing us. But, um, you know, it's nice. Um, we have, in the recent years, once we became more successful, um, been recruited to move to several places. Owensboro, Kentucky, uh, Indiana. Um, and, uh, I mean, it's just, just wouldn't feel right to me. Plus, now... I've got six families that depend on us, you know, and, and they're great. We've got a tremendous team and I would never, you know, want to break that up if I, if I could control it. Sure. And right now I can, so. Of course. So, uh, I know you've had some heavy hitters, pun intended, uh, (laughs) that have used your products. So kind of talk through who they are, what's that meant to growing your brand and kind of like who are the buyers of your bats? Yeah, once again, I mean, we sell from T-Ball, actually, well, from birth on, because we do birth announcements and things like that, you know, uh, put their weight and date and, you know, when they were born and called up on the day they were born, that type of thing, uh, to the big leagues. Um, you know, in the past, some of our biggest names have been uh, Kyle, Kyle, Schwar- Kyle Schwarber, uh, one of our biggest guys. We've had Starley Marte over the years, uh, Colton Wong, Matt Adams, uh, Sean Rodriguez. Um, we've worked with Bryce Harper. We've wor- we've worked with a lot of the big names over the years. Pandemic kind of set us back because the 2019 we had our our biggest I guess, stable of pro guys um, where we had three 13 big leaguers swinging us wow. and close to 70 minor leaguers. Pandemic happened. Lose access to the players. Um, spring training kind of shuts down. Things like that. So we've you know, we're, we're, we're building back up. And this, this spring training, um, which I just got back from, was the first time since the pandemic that it seemed like it was getting back to normal. So it was, it was a great reception. We got a lot of potential uh, new business out of there. And, and, and right now we got three guys in the big leagues. So we're, mm-hmm. we're excited. Very good. That has to be very exciting to see your bat. You know, when you're watching a ball game, see your bat. Um, right there in their hands. We talk a lot about business and how it requires some sort of support system um, to get through the ups and downs that you've talked about. And you've talked a lot about your dad. Mm -hmm. Um, Tell us a little bit about how important that is or what that's been like uh, to share this experience with your dad. I mean, it's, it's great. I mean, who, who else? I mean, I I know other people do, but I mean, it's, it's just a lucky a situation to be able to work with your dad day in and day out, mm-hmm. you know, outside of, you know, like dad's over here, business partner over here, but it, you know, it's, it meshes, meshes well. You know, we've had our, as he calls them early on, the uh, uh, Orange County chopper moments. Do you remember those? <laughs> uh-huh. And yeah. at one time we were going to pitch a, uh, pitch a uh, show to uh, the networks and see just, uh, cause that's how we are, you know, it's just ideas after ideas. And, uh, 
but no, it's it's been tremendous. I wouldn't trade it for the world. We've got to travel all over the country, uh, meet meet a ton of amazing people, uh, both in the professional business as well as you know players and stuff. So it's yeah, it's been great. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we can continue on for another twenty or thirty years. Yeah. So in addition to your dad, uh, what other support do you have, or what do you attribute to uh, your success? Uh, I mean. There's been tons of mentors along the way, connections through the baseball industry. You know, for example, you know, um, the people I know, a lot of them homegrown in Southern Illinois. Derek Shelton uh, went to SIU. He's now the manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, uh, Kyle Haynes from Flora, Illinois, is the hitting coach for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, Stubby Clapp, the Cardinals coach. I mean, just, you know, connections – through baseball mainly, you know, I always called it one of the biggest fraternities, you know, I never joined a fraternity in college, but I always said baseball was my fraternity because mm-hmm. it's got, it's the same type of uh, uh, camaraderie and stuff. So that's, yeah. uh, that's where most of my sport and, you know, my wife being there through everything, all my travel, all the times when uh, things were tight and sure. stressful. So that's been a big support as well. Great. So we talked about the uh, practical application of the bats, but I heard you touch a little bit on what I would call the commemorative or Mm -hmm. collector bats. Um, At the end of summer, the uh, Southern Illinois Truck Showdown, I know you use your bats Mm -hmm. as the awards for all the best of Mm -hmm. truck winners, which I think is great. You mentioned um, using them for birth announcements or to recognize call updates. Are there anything that you, any places that your bats ended up that you're like, that's a really cool story of uh, using them in that recognition sort of way? Yeah, I mean, I'll get random text messages or Facebook messages with pictures of seeing a bat. Like I'm in Spartanburg, North Carolina or South Carolina, I think it's South Carolina, and it's in the airport, you know, in a display or at a restaurant somewhere in a bigger area and sometimes I don't even know how they got there um, mm-hmm. sometimes I do but I mean I, I guess it's a good thing that we've gotten to a level where I don't remember exactly <laughs> every order that mm-hmm. goes out the door so um, yeah I mean we've we've um, we've got one in the display at the Hall of Fame oh which is uh, when the Cubs broke the curse and mm-hmm. so I got to give the Cubs a little bit of credit but yeah. you know still go cards but anyway <laughs> um, but yeah so I mean, my whole goal through life in baseball was to make it to the big leagues. And I always joke with some of the, my coach friends who didn't get there till later that, you know, I mean, you know, we got there just mm-hmm. uh, in a different path. So just in a different way. Yeah. Very good. You have such an inspiring story. And I think listeners, whether they are in business, thinking about starting a business or just getting started, are going to take away some tidbits from this conversation that will help them. But any advice you would give to someone who maybe maybe they are facing the loss of a big contract or they're uh, seeking that next big contract or just trying to um, take an idea a dream that they have and and just get started what advice would you give to them basically just get started like you said um too too often we try to come up with and i I do it now with like marketing plans and things like that is you 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 can talk yourself out of things but you know i read uh, a lot of motivational business books and i think it was jack canfield said ready or uh, you know ready fire aim Mm. so you take your shot see where it lands and then adjust from that rather than sit there and wait and try to hit the target perfectly the first time. That's that's, great advice. So any other business books that you recommend? Oh, tons. Or top your list. Oh man. The success principles by Jack Canfield is one of my favorites. I've probably listened to that once a month Mm -hmm. and I do everything audible now. That's, uh, I was always, uh, I was always, a slow reader, let's say, you know, um, so once I got audible now, I, I'm probably going through 10 books a, a week. Um, cause it'll, you know, three, four hours will go by in no time. Well, and um, it maximizes your time too, because you can, well, whether you're working walk, yeah. or in the car or, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, rich dad, poor dad's a good one. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, you're putting me on the spot there. 
I can look at, I can pull up my audible and give you, I got a time, I got about a hundred titles, but, uh, but yeah, I, uh, you know, the millionaire mindset, just mm-hmm. all, all that type of focus, um, you know, from the business side and the motivational, the positive side. And then, you know, you know, always, uh, throw in the Bible there once a month, of course. you know, if I can. So yeah. very good. So, um, you said marketing plan, which made me wonder, are there any outside partners, whether it's an SBDC, an accountant, are there anybody that is on your team that you're sourcing things from outside of your company? Uh, right now we've got a full-time business development and marketing guy in house. I mean, he wears a lot of hats. It's that's his main title, but he's in sales. He manages the website. He, you know, he does a lot of things, um, for the business. Um, we, we do and have used the resources, uh, in the past, um, from all the, all the available things, but you know, it hasn't, haven't done anything since the pandemic, I don't think. Um, but we, we've had commercials done. We've had, you know, marketing plans done. We've had, we've had a lot of helpful things, um, and hope to, to reach out again, just, Really, like I said, this is the first normal year since the pandemic. So I'm, I'm excited for the first time, and not the first time, since the pandemic. You know, sure. that, where's this going to go and, and can we grow it again? So. That's awesome. so Kyle, one of my favorite questions at the end of every interview is uh, what is your why? What, what keeps you going? What gets you up in the morning? What's your why for, for what you're doing? Um, you know, just the love of the game. You know, I just... I, Absolutely love baseball, always have. Um, and now a bigger part of the why is, is my son. You know, I, wanna, I want to leave a legacy, which is what I think my father was doing by, you know, you know supporting me and, and partnering with me on this business. So those, uh, I guess, the passion for the sport and, and family. Passing it down generation to generation. My son played baseball. We traveled all across the country with mm-hmm. travel ball. Right. And he's older now. And I always look back and think, gosh, if I could just see one more baseball game, yeah. you know. But I think we took it in as much as we could at the time. And he has one of those commemorative engraved dinger bats uh, that we certainly cherish. So awesome. uh, you were a part of our family and our, our experience with baseball as well. Yeah, and I feel like baseball has been important in uh, our family from my grandparents listening on the radio, and which I try to do occasionally, and I'm thinking, I can't keep track of what's going on. <laughs> and then my dad um, had uh, has been to all three of the most recent Cardinal stadiums, so uh, he's seen the Browns, Bush 1 oh, wow. and Bush 2. Mm. So... Uh, go cards, super yeah. important part. But uh, <laughs> enough about my my story. Uh, if people want to do business with you, reach out to you, um, just learn more about what you're up to. How do they? What's the best way to get in touch with you? Yeah, the website is uh, dingerbats.com. Uh, you can check out all the products and a little bit of the backstory. Um, but we've got Facebook at dingerbats, Instagram, Twitter, all at dingerbats. So uh, just check it out. And we also, on the Southern Illinois Now website, we have different feature stories, and Dinger Bats was one of the first um, companies that were featured. There's a great video on there, and you and your dad talking, and just showing kind of an inside look uh, of how Dinger Bats are made, and, and just the, the company itself. So did you put your dad out of the countertop business, or is that still going? No, it's definitely still going. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, he definitely loves the travel side and the, you know, of the baseball. And he, I mean, he's just passionate about baseball, but, uh, the, uh, solid surface countertops is a, you know, it's a good business. So. Oh, two reasons to go to Ridgeway. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. <laughs> and with that, we'll wrap up here. And so just appreciate everybody tuning in to the small town, big business podcast. Again, thanks to our sponsors. Our Cadia Wealth Group, Black Diamond, Harley Davidson, and RV, Swinford Media Group, Watermark, Auto Group Foundation, Fowler Heating and Air, and our producer, Union Street Arts. And thanks again for joining us for Small Town Big Business. As we mentioned, you can find us on your favorite podcast platform, also on our YouTube channel. And again, don't forget to subscribe. It's free, and you get to see all of our episodes the minute they drop. 
Um, thanks again to Kyle Drone, CEO of Dinger Bats, for joining us today. I'm your co-host, Deb Barnett, with Southern Illinois Now, and you can find us at southerninillinoisnow.org. And I'm Jennifer Olson with the City of Marion. All my contact is on LinkedIn, or you're welcome to come up to Tower Square Plaza and visit us at the new City Hall.